Have you ever felt exhausted after turning the clocks back or experienced a jet lag? So how on earth does your body know what time it is? Well, you see, over the millions of years of evolving on a rotating planet, organisms have actually adapted to this constant change of day and night. Even in 19th century, scientists have noticed that plants would open up their leaves during the day and close at night, even when they had no light cues, which meant they somehow were able to keep track of time. And the same idea is basically true for humans. There's actually a clock in every single cell of your body and one central up in the brain to synchronize all the countless others with each other and the actual external time. So let's track how it works. Depending on whether it's bright or dark outside, special cells in your retina would send that information to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, a small bundle of neurons in your hypothalamus. And these nerve cells is where the ticking happens. Here we have a cell's nucleus and inside there is DNA storing all the information about the body. Let's look at two particular genes called period and cryptochrome. These genes have something like parking spots for proteins situated on their DNA called E-boxes. Here's our first two proteins, clock and BML1, who are tightly bound together forming a complex. When this complex is bound to the E-box, the gene becomes active and can make its own protein. The period gene is responsible for protein called PER, and cryptochrome makes one named cry. At 12 o'clock at night, clock and BML1 bind to the E-box and consequently, per and cry begin to be formed and are collected in the cytoplasm. But the cytoplasm is stuffed for only proteins and many of them get destroyed by different enzymes. Eventually, the synthesis of new ones outplays the destruction and after a delay of about 12 hours, per and cry finally bind together, also forming a complex. In the state of complex, they have an ability to travel back into the nucleus and pull the clock and BML1 pairs away from the DNA. Do you see what happens? Remember that then the clock and BML1 are not on the DNA, the gene inactivates. That way per and cry inhibit their own production. This is actually known as transcriptional translational feedback loop. After the production is stopped, the per and cry complexes slowly degrade inside the nucleus. The degradation allows BML1 and clock to rebind to the DNA and the whole cycle starts again. If we were to draw a graph, the concentration of per and cry would be lowest at midnight, then it would go up up up, peak at midday and then slowly go down. These oscillations of per and cry proteins is basically how your body keeps track of time. But what about these light cues? Well, you see, every time the neuron fires up, it increases the production of per and cry. So if you are exposed to bright light in the early morning, you are shifted towards midday and it helps you wake up. In contrast though, if it happens in the late evening, you are also shifted towards midday and it can screw up your sleep. Now why does your body need to keep track of time? It's essential because all the sleep patterns, hormone activity, and body temperature are all regulated by the biological clock. There are even studies that drugs work more effectively at the particular time of day. Thank you.